Welcome to the Dungeon Crawlers Podcast, casting light on the depths of online multiplayer gaming. I'm your host, Jelos, and we are back once again here to talk about the MMORPGs that we love. And I am joined by my awesome co-host, Stormslord. How are you? Oh, doing great. Having a great time. All right. Uh, and Alpha Soul. Good to be back as always. And the one and only Mr. Crowjack. Hi. How's it going? How we doing? I'm pretty good. I good. was rocking out the Blind Guardian to start this out. Is so. that what that was? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Nightfall in uh, Middle Earth album. So for those who don't know or don't like lore. Nerds. Uh, that was the song of Feanor crossing the sea and, you know, rejecting the Valar. Anyway, love it. Great ep- great album you should pick it up it's awesome anyway we got a fun show planned for you guys tonight we've got well actually one new mm no two actually we have a couple of new mmos coming out and are being relaunched we have one that is shutting down um we have maps lots of maps so many maps but no game to go with them and uh yeah and I and I think we've been mostly playing a lot of one game in particular. Black Desert Online. <laughs> Hello Kitty Island Adventures. No. Rose King no. Classic. <clears throat> Arcade Classic. You're getting close. At least half <laughs> of that's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think about other MMOs and they're just not coming to my brain right now. Elder Scrolls Online Classic. Well, so close. So close. <laughs> Star Wars: The Old Republic Classic. <laughs> I don't even know how. I don't know how far we're gonna let this bit go. So I'm just letting I'll it keep roll. Going. I, I, Coat classic. <laughs> Coat classic. <laughs> EverQuest Classic. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, Ultima Online Classic. Yes, that's what it is. Anyway, Storms, what have you been doing this week? What have I been doing this week? <clears throat> Besides killing myself at work, I've been having fun uh, reintroducing myself to Ark. Uh, Atlas got a bit old, so we decided to uh. get ready for the new expansion of Ark coming out this winter uh, called Genesis. Mm. So we've decided to restart uh, from the original map, the island. Oh, God. One, and then we're walking all the way through until we get up to and can play uh, the Genesis map. What is the theme of Genesis? I don't know yet. They haven't given a whole lot of clues yet, but there's like some creatures that change. Like one's a little small little panda thing with four arms. It turns into like a werewolf thing. So <laughs> it, uh, it, it adds some more dimension to it, but I'm sure they're going to keep the other stuff to it. But again, I've only played Ark, the island, and then Ragnarok mm-hmm. a little bit. So I'm looking forward to Scorched Earth and uh, Aberration as we go through that. Uh, we've also decided to, we're doing our own private server because it's old, right? But we've decided to do the holidays too. So we did the summer bash the last couple of weeks, even though it was earlier in the year for Ark itself. So we had all these colorful red, white, and blue dinosaurs running around, which was interesting. <laughs> um, a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Just in fact, earlier I was trapping an Argentavis and then I'm he's trapped. He's in the trap. I'm getting ready to shoot him. And I start to feel that shake you get when the Tyrannosaurus Rex walks up behind you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And a snap, I'm gone, right? Because <laughs> I was going to shoot the Argent Davis and the Rex decided to eat me instead. Nice. But fun. I enjoy it, really enjoying it. It's a great time for me, anyways, because it's a PVE versus the world. I like mm-hmm. that. Um, it's pretty tough as it is. We bumped up the, the, uh, the gather rates and the XP the, rates. The, the and... gather rates, but also the. The uh, dangerousness, I guess, is the word, right? Difficulty? Of the dinosaurs, right? So we gotcha. leveled them up. That's a good word. We leveled the dinosaurs <laughs> up, which makes we get higher levels, but then it's more dangerous when you're out there. Like today, I got killed by a beaver, a 150 beaver. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's fun. It's interesting. I'm enjoying and, it. Uh, getting vengeance. There you go. Nice. Nice. All right. A Jellos, what have you been playing? Probably the same thing that both you and Alpha have been playing. <clears throat> World yeah. of Qcraft. What are you talking about? 
That is another Never name for that. it. Yes. I very rarely have ever encountered a Q. The only time I've encountered a Q are times like right now, where I feel like re-logging into the game halfway through the day. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's because you play in the morning, right? I'm up at 5, 4.30, 5, go to the gym, come back, log in. There's no queue. There's a medium mm. server population. Medium. Because nobody's alive yet. Because no one's yeah. alive yet. Yeah. Which, by the way, I, I, I did that a couple times, like, I think three of the days. Yeah. And playing in the morning is completely different oh, than playing beautiful. at night. Your like, grind spots are clear. There's yeah. no one in sight. Everything's clear. There, it's no war zone over, you know, yeah. every piece. It is fantastic. Yep. Anyways, this was a Jealous' section of talk. We just completely took Sorry. it over. So, Jealous, please! What have you yeah. been playing recently? <laughs> Literally. You can't, is... say, you can't say well classic. Sorry. <laughs> well, then he's done talking. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, Jealous, what have you been playing recently? That would be World of Warcraft. <laughs> classic. <laughs> classic. Classic. Now, classic. Uh, classic. It's been a lot of fun. Like it's been a real big refresher. We were actually having this discussion in uh, you know, our guild's Discord. We we were talking about classic versus retail. And one of the things we were talking about playing retail and how I still enjoy playing retail. And I play it from time to time, not so much since classic launch because I've been in there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's classic a lot launch. of quality of life stuff in retail because I mean Retail is a better game than Classic is, from a mechanic standpoint. It's a more polished game than yes. Classic, I will say that. Yeah, but there is something just beautiful about the community side of Classic and the fact that it mm -hmm. actually feels like an MMO, not just a, an instance jump in, jump out kind of deal. Um, yep. I was doing, and all these quests are solo. Like, they're all meant to... Well, I shouldn't say meant to, but they can be done solo. And yep. I was in Ratchet just doing my own little thing and um, killing a bunch of pirates. And I saw a priest who had pulled too many things. Mm. I could have walked by, but I was like, well, okay, I'll help them kill them. Even though I don't get credit. We were not in a group, so I didn't get any credit. There was nothing in it for me per se. But I just felt like, hey, I'm going to help this person out. They pulled, like, three things. I know they're going to die because not even I can do three things on my warrior, at least at the level we were at. Um, yep. it, it's just not how classic is. You will die. So I helped them, and they thanked me and said, hey, are you doing this quest too? I said, well, yeah. So we invited to a group. And by the end, we had a full party going through. We were killing stuff together. We escorted the... Uh, did a big escort quest that takes mm. literally a year and a half. Oh, uh, isn't that the one from the castle all the way back to Ratchet? Yep. Oh, that's a pain. Yep. Mm. It, yeah, it is. And it's funny to see because it was the original uh, um, Blood Elf model, which was yep. literally just a shorter Night Elf model with yep. a peach-colored skin cover on instead of the purple skin. Um, but you had to lead someone through there. It was just neat to see how that group formed mm -hmm. just more or less naturally from the, Hey, I'm going to help this person out. Absolutely. Organically. Yeah. yeah. It was, I mean, we got so much done. It was great. And then even later on, um, I had been doing stuff. It was solo. It was great. And I happened to run in and I pulled too many things. And guess what? A priest came to my aid, a completely mm -hmm. different one. And we just stuck it out for the next like 30 minutes farming stuff together because yep. it just worked out well for us. We were both there. We're like, hey, let's do this. And it's, it's something that I miss from MMOs. And we talked about saying, this is why I play these games. Uh -huh. This mm -hmm. entire thing. It was beautiful, and I loved it. So, yeah. There's something to say about the difficulty of the leveling in terms of, like, one mob, you're fine. Two mobs, you're popping cooldowns. Three mobs, you're popping all your cooldowns and a potion and praying to God you live. Yep. Because of that difficulty, mm. the, the random people coming in to help you or the random people tossing you a heal. I'm a rogue. All of a sudden, I'm getting, like, healed by priests or druids. I'm almost dead. Or you see, like you said, the person's almost dead. You go there, give them a hand. Just earlier today, I had these extra scrolls on me, an intelligence scroll and a strength scroll. 
And I'm like, I'm a rogue. So I walked to the nearest warlock, boom, intelligence. I walked to the nearest warrior, boom, strength. And I just kept walking. Mm -hmm. I wasted silver to do that, but I didn't need these things. So I just gave them off. Like, because the game is so hard, there just seems to be people more willing to help each other. Right. I'm hoping that other MMOs see that mm -hmm. and don't give their player bases an easy time leveling. Right. Encourage people to work together because of how difficult the challenge is. Because overcoming difficult challenges is rewarding. It is. And it, it felt good because it because everyone knows it's difficult, that pay it forward. Like I said, helping yep. someone out in retail WoW, if you help someone out, you get credit. As long as they're on your side, they, they took yep. away the tagging system. Yep. Like, yep. So it actually is beneficial to you. To help someone in Classic, if you're not in a group, it's not beneficial, but people still do it because it's that hope of someone will pay it forward to you later on. Yep. I helped that priest out earlier, like two days before, and a priest came to my aid when I had pulled too many things. It was it was nice to see, and everyone's doing it. So that's, so karma works in MMOs as well. Mm -hmm. It it is a little bit like that. I also yeah. think because of how how classic is with the naming, not being able to change things, server communities, people help because your reputation matters more. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm wondering what the effect is, though, of the layering technology that they added. Because there's groups within, at least on our server, since our server is so, I think it's probably the biggest server in WoW Classic. It's one of the two. This one and Ferlina are the two really big ones. White Main's yeah. pretty big, too. I think the three of our servers are fighting for top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but what they're using is layering technology mm -hmm. for yeah. it. And so there's a bunch of... Um, I actually got sent a bunch of invites for, I forgot what they're called, like communities, basically, that assist in jumping between layers Yep. Uh, for players. So I'm wondering if that's actually cutting down on some of that past mystique. A little bit, but without that layering, you're trying to cram 20,000 people in the, the square kilometer of World of Warcraft, the square kilometers. Oh, no, Each totally zone. get it. Yeah, there's I, value I, in that. I totally get why it's there, mm -hmm. but original wow did not have that so sure. you were more likely to come across the same people mm -hmm. rather than them being in a different you know layer yes you can still form your social bonds though and then um add them to your friend list and then play with them further again in the future by you know getting at yeah. a party and they're teleported to the same layer but you're right you don't just randomly run into the same people over and over again again because there's twenty thousand people on Harat. easy uh, yeah yeah, yeah. I think I think part of that, if you were on a lower pop server, the yeah. instancing is far less than it is here. And I, instancing is the wrong word. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's worldwide, phasing, it's yeah. one giant layer on the entire planet. Yeah, right. It's a big old instance. And mm. and I see chat saying they're they say they're going to remove layering. <laughs> I don't see how that's going to be possible. Mm. I, they'd like to, but. Again, picture, okay, let's say not 20,000 people because not all of them will be on the same time. Let's say 5,000 people. You put 5,000 people yeah. on the map of World Classic, each zone is going to have hundreds of people. Yeah. Each zone, hundreds. But even, absolutely. But even think about what's going to happen in, let's just say, a month, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or two months when everyone starts hitting 60. There's yep. only like you know, three yeah. or four zones and four areas where you can actually go to. Mm -hmm. So that cluster that we all saw is potentially going to start to happen again. Yep. In, you know, the end instances. And when we get to areas. events like the opening of the gates of Encourage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wonder how they're going to handle that with instance instancing. Oh, dude, that means the AQ opening event will have, will it have multiple instances of the AQ opening event and therefore multiple rewards of the AQ opening event because of well, layering. Technically speaking, technically speaking, when that would be true to classic because there was a bug in classic <clears throat> that yeah. it was supposed to be the first person who rang the gong, but it was the first, it was anyone who rang the gong for like 20 to 48 hours also got the reward. Uh, yeah. Because it was supposed to be the first person, but I forget the exact reasoning behind it. But it was after someone rang the gong, anyone else who came up and rang it after that 24 hours or within Fine. that time was okay. Until like the next server restart was okay. 
Gotcha. Alpha, what's been your favorite part of WoW Classic so far? Um, I don't know. I think it's I think it's more the community aspect uh, for me. Mm -hmm. So, it's or I you know what community is kind of a weird word to use. So let me put it this way: when I'm leveling, I go out and generally I'm always in. Obviously, we're all in contested zones and always fighting. Yep. And it's 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 really fun to see either Alliance and Horde not tack each other because everyone just wants to level, or somebody come in, <clears throat> steamroll in, and upset the whole balance, and all of a sudden everyone's fighting everywhere yeah. all the time. And nobody's leveling because everyone's fighting, right? Yeah. Uh, and then it kind of goes back to it. So the world PvP aspect and the world just, you know, aspect of just being there together is 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 what I really like about WoW Classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone's going through the loving process together, and we're fortunate that in this phase there is no honor rewarded for player versus player kills. Mm -hmm. Correct. If there was, you would see a whole lot more PvP in places like Stranglethorn than there is right now. As Alpha mentioned, there are stretches of time where I've walked past alliance, I've walked past parties of three or four alliance who just see me and wave because everyone's focusing on trying to get a sixty, right? But yeah. if there was some honor you could earn on the side on the way up, oh, it would be a bloodbath in so many zones. Yeah. Oh well. So I I was talking to a jealous about this. I actually I don't like the I thought the honor system and the way they implemented it was the first step to eliminating world PvP because then people started leveling within the um what is it. What is that first zone? Yeah, the battlegrounds. Basically, mm -hmm. they started leveling there. They started moving away from there, and it became the race to be the first one to warlord. They wanted those rep yep. rewards, and so rather than you know, obviously, people want to do the most efficient way to level those, and the most efficient way was in battlegrounds, was in Arathi ba Basin and stuff so like that. So what you don't itself. hate, you don't necessarily hate the honor system because <clears throat> the honor system predates the battlegrounds. The honor system was created. And then because of it, we had the amazing battles of Torn Mill and South Shore. Yes. Yeah. And then time later, they really gave us Warsong Gulch and Altrack Valley. And we're going to experience that all over again. Phase two, honor comes out. You're going to see Torn Mill, South Shore all over again. Phase three with Blackwing Lair, we're getting Warsong Gulch and Altrack Valley. Mm -hmm. So phase two for us, honor's out and there's no BGs. So open mm. world is going to be phenomenal. Mm. Mm, yeah. What do you guys think? Do you think they're going to have any more classic plans for BlizzCon? And also, the popularity, or the at least within the first week or so, mm -hmm. for WoW Classic has been insane. Shocking. Shocking. Did I, didn't, I didn't see this coming. Like I expected a lot, but I figured that a lot more people would jump on if they ever progressed, if they ever progressed to BC and Wrath. Because right. Wrath was such a huge expansion for everyone. Well, hmm. remember when they did the name reservations, there was six or eight servers. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were adamant about not adding because they wanted these communities. They're they over 40. That. Yeah. They have over 40 servers now, and they're all high or full. Yeah. During peak yeah. times, I look in the queue. Like, I bet you if I looked right now, it'd just be like red across there the There might be one or two, at least in North America, yeah. that are medium, yeah. and that's it. Yep. And again, the beauty, the benefit of, of layering is months from now, there's like two months from now, between now and before the next phase comes out, when there's a bit of a lull, instead of having servers have next to no population, you just have fewer layers. It still feels just as full because Ooh. of that layering, right? They're still fitting, the, uh, the layers will still have, let's just pick a number, a thousand people per layer. There'll be less of them. So even while you're playing, it'll still feel beautifully full, which is Ooh. sweet. It will. I'm 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 really digging it, like really really digging it. So, yeah. Except Gray beat me to forty. That's right, Gray. Yeah, that's right. You beat me to forty. <clears throat> he did. He did. I was scared there for a bit because Alpha took that time off and he was power leveling like a machine. He was out ahead mm -hmm. of the pack, Mister. Oh Alpha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had to go away for the weekend. Yeah, then real life took it. Weekend took control. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. I will say the community aspect, not just from the game. But within even our own guild has been amazing. Like yep. people are just digging WoW Classic. You're getting so many app poor Agellos can't even level up because he keeps getting these applications. He's doing interviews and doing admin yeah. work. And <laughs> I had four interviews to do in one night already, and I'm just like, oh dear. I'm sorry. 
No, it's good. I just keep sending people towards the guild. I'm like, yeah, apply. Here's a link. Go talk to a jealous. Yeah, yeah, every time. I'm, yeah. And I'm like, bro, Jack, no. And I've got two <laughs> of my buddies in. I've got one more buddy probably on the way. And then my wife is thinking about starting up the game, so she'll be in. Oh, yeah. nice. My yeah. wife's actually thinking about it, too. She was questioning yeah. me about Classic as well, going, what can I play? Uh, well, she thought we were playing Alliance. I said we we're playing Horde, and then she got all upset. But now she's trying to think, can I be a troll priest? Yeah, I can. Yep. So, yeah, yeah no, it, it's been great. No, it, it's, it's just funny that you mentioned that. Yeah, like the interest just from the outside of our guild coming in mm -hmm. has been insane as well. Like we have a... Our our WoW guild is growing by leaps and bounds. Like, yep, we we have enough for our own raids plus some, which is great. So, we'll see how that goes as we all get closer to sixty. But hey, we should probably talk about some of the other news. Yeah, yeah. Since there's no other important MMOs out right now, come <laughs> on. We did joke about this just being the WoW Classic show after this. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a thing. Anyway, the first thing we got up on the docket is a new cyberpunk style MMO that's being designed for both VR and PC called Zenith. Now I'm going to go ahead and queue up the video. Cause I think it'd be neat to see the Kickstarter video sure. for people who are watching us on uh, youtube.com slash dungeon crawl network. But of course, because it's video, you may miss some stuff, but it there's, there's speaking. So even our audio listeners will be okay. So let's go ahead and queue this up and go right now. Hi, I'm Andy, and we're working on Zenith, a massively multiplayer VR MMORPG that's also cross-compatible with desktop. We're really excited about Zenith because it's the game we want to play. It's a gorgeous anime-inspired world that can support millions of players eventually. Hey, I'm Lauren. I'm the CTO of Ramen VR, and I'm really excited to be working on Zenith. Um, between the two of us, we have decades of experience in the gaming and tech space. Personally, I also have engineering experience from Unity and Google. This Kickstarter because we fundamentally believe that the more money we can raise from people that will actually play the game, the more we can stay true to the artistic vision. We view Zenith as a project that we're all co-creating together, and your feedback over the course of the project is going to help us improve and make the game better for everyone. We're using spatial OS, which means that we can have a world that's dynamic, persistent, and huge without any loading screens or anything like that. Ultimately, we see Zenith as a social metaverse where people can hang out, forge true relationships, get to know each other, and really build a self-actualizing experience. Yeah, and last but not least, thank you so much for backing us on Kickstarter, and thank you to the amazing community that has really rallied around this game even prior to the Kickstarter launch. The support has been unbelievable, and we believe that we can make the future of MMOs together with you. We've been playing games like these our whole lives. We play JRPGs, we love anime, we play D&D together, and so we're really excited to bring that experience to VR. It really is a dream come true. Thanks.
that was the the video they posted from the Kickstarter. I mean, there's a few things right off the bat. <sighs> they are already eight hundred and like ten percent funded because they were only asking for twenty five thousand dollars. They're over two hundred thousand right now. How on earth can you build anything for that little money? That initial ask, how? How on earth? Spatial OS is something that sticks out to me. Um, Storms, I've kind of thrown you under the bus here, but when we talk about Spatial OS, I know you've looked at it probably the most out of mm -hmm. all of us. I don't think the OS is, the engine is going to change it too much, right? The question is not uh, the cost of goods. It's the cost of, of digital items, right? So the question is, how are they getting their digital items? That's the major cost. Are they creating them, right, at an hourly rate of uh, whatever per hour? Mm -hmm. Or are they purchasing them uh, already ready-made, right, and tweaking them, right? It depends what they're going to do. So you can do something for cheap. The question is, how good is it going to look? Right. Hmm. And uh, shout so out to Mindless Gamer for the five gift subs in chat right now. Thank you so much, mate. Much appreciated. I the assets I spent that current... twenty bucks and had the BR running. I mean, I spent twenty bucks to get a BR running, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Obviously, an MMO is that much more. But if it depends on what engine they're using, there's one engine out there called well, when it fits on either Unreal or um, Unity, that is an MMO framework. Right, so it had a, has all the things that you know MMOs come with, crafting, you know, experience, yep. all that sort of stuff. What okay. you have to do though is get the art. It's the art that's the differentiator. The systems can be tweaked, but it's your art that makes you different. It's your theme, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're just going to purchase digital art, you can get it running pretty quick. I don't yep. know if they can though, like because they have a very specific. It's an anime art style. They already said so. I'm I'm already lost interest, but you know it <laughs> still looks good. Like from what they've showed, it mm -hmm. looks good from what they have. But for all we know, that could have been one small map the size of like an Overwatch map. You know, like we yep. don't really know what was all in and there. It probably is. Yeah, it's not massive. The art style, though, I will give them this. Even though I prefer more realistic, that stylized art style has a, a, a longevity that yep. others don't. Yeah, if they can give it polish, you're right. It will stand the test of time. I wasn't overly impressed with what I saw. I enjoy that art style, and that one didn't resonate with me. Again, it's Kickstarter. They're really early in development, but I wasn't too impressed with what I saw with that particular um, presentation. Mm. I, I know I know as as networking technology gets better and better, a lot of my concerns of how are they doing these types of things start going out the door. But the fact they're trying to aim to be a VR style as well, I I don't know. Like VR itself just seems to be a dead platform first and foremost. No, it's not dead. It's just too early. The tech the tech is too bulky. It's like it's like MS DOS. Right, it's just it's too early. Off people's heads, it's not going to work. People are not going to wear glasses. 3D was a fad because of the glasses. VR is a fad because of the contraption. Right, mm. as soon as they get it to work without having to have a thing on your head, big old bulky thing, then people will buy it. Yeah, my my first uh, one of our sons is like, why would I buy monitors ever again? I can just use you know the VR and just mm. see it right in front of me, right? So why? But I can pretend I have a ninety-inch you know monitor because I can just put yeah. it on my. Head. I don't want to wear something yeah. on my head all day. Right? How, but I think it's, it depends who do it. I don't see how you can how accomplish that otherwise. I don't know. Well, we haven't figured it out yet. That's just it, right? Yeah, there's, they'll find there's a way. Always that next way because when everyone thinks about holograms is impossible to do without. Mm. You know, it, but they will figure it out. A jealous. This thing a in my hand was an impossibility 30, 40 years ago. An impossibility. The ability to communicate with people all across the mm -hmm. planet, access the internet. Right? So just time. The right. technology really needs to grow. Yeah. It does. Okay. I agree with that. 
But time is something that MMOs, especially Kickstarter MMOs, don't always have. Oh, yeah, no. Anyone trying oh, to do it now, so you're yeah. way ahead of the game. <laughs> no, I agree. But maybe 34 oh, years now? of v, like a full VR well, ability. Considering might the be rain, a thing. I wouldn't say that long. Considering how fast tech is like evolving and growing, yeah. especially the past 10, 15 years, like, I wouldn't give it 30. But it's you're still, true. if you're. I'm a treadmill. Uh, That's yeah. What you're, I, right? Yeah. I wouldn't give it 30, but. Put it this way, if Amazon was the one behind this, I would still be skeptical just mm -hmm. because the technology isn't there yet. So yeah, for a smaller, button. yeah, yeah. It is, let's just say it does come around. We all know that when technology first comes, it's pretty expensive, right? Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I just don't realistically see it being much unless they somehow get absorbed by a larger company and, you know. I have an HTC Vive. I've made content with the HTC Vive, and from first-hand experience, it is, unless you've used it, it's hard to understand just how amazing and immersive even this rudimentary technology is. You put that thing on, and you're in the game, and it's shocking. If you, if you play a VR game with the HTC Vive for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and you take the headset off, it feels weird being in reality again. That's how convincing it is right now. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's from a first-hand experience. I have other friends who have done it too. It's crazy how, how good it is now. And I, I five years from now, ten years from now, I can't wait to see what it's going to do. But like Storm said, big old bulky kind of heavy headset, they got to find a way to streamline that. Mm -hmm. They got to give it the Apple treatment, you know what I mean? And make yeah, it yeah. just smooth and streamlined and comfortable and all that jazz. My issue mm -hmm. is, and this is something we've been playing with Classic for a while, how much running is there in, in classic? Yeah, I think oh, Lord. figure that out. No, yeah. movement in VR games. Like they yes. even have the Skyrim Teleport. VR. Oh, yeah, but how mm. are you gonna do that in an MMO side? Teleport Bingo. everywhere? Bingo, they gotta solve that mm. motion sickness problem. They do. I think now, that... if you teleport, you don't get it. But it's oh. when you turn your head that you do. It's your cause your perception, your peripheral peripheral vision, yep. if I can say yep. that. Um is important to your brain because it, it uses it as it turns it's looking at over here where you're turning mm. it's getting ready to focus on what's coming around so if you're turning your head and you don't have that you, you're just yep. lost right yep and the sensation of walking the visual sensation mm -hmm. of walking but your body's not physically moving just messes you up it confuses your entire nervous system like crazy it does that's why you need it on a treadmill you, you yeah. really do yep because I tried, this was weird. I tried Skyrim, I had a treadmill in my office for a while. Yeah. And I tried Skyrim walking down a path on a treadmill. How'd that feel? That worked fine. Yeah. It looked weird with my hands moving back. To <laughs> <laughs> it felt like I was walking through the path. Yeah, that's cool. But it was a one way, you know, real slow walk. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Actually, I, I take this back. Now that I'm looking at this, there's five. So there's seven people working on this. Oh, oh, that's a lot more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, No Man's Sky, mm -hmm. their VR is equipmentless VR. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're heading that way. But I didn't, haven't turned it on to see how it looks, but that's that yep. way. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, definitely something to check out. Um, if you're interested in checking that out, there will be a link in the description below if you want to check out that one. Uh, let's go ahead and move on down the line. We do have an MMO shutting down. I don't know if you've ever heard of this one, but it was an internet rogue or um, like a sci-fi rogue roguelike. roguelike. Um, if anyone doesn't know what that is, it's kind of like Diablo. Oh. Uh, called Lazarus. That is actually shutting down. And what... What makes this sad for me is that the company who is doing this is an indie MMO company. So this is one of those MMOs that was probably kickstarted and mm. will fail before it ever goes out the gate. Yep. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Or now, if I this fail, why would MMOs be different? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So they were saying they 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 were working on persistent servers. Uh, bunch of stress test updates all that stuff was coming through and then they were in an open alpha for i think two or three years Jeez. but that's just wow. it and the what they put out 
was, and I'll, and I'll quote this, put simply, if we were to launch Lazarus, the cost of maintaining and expanding mm-hmm. the game as we marketed it to more players and worked on our monetization would put a dangerous financial strain on the independent game studio like ours. We both love Lazarus and the community has grown around it, but we can't take the risk. Mm. It just, they're just not bringing in enough money. Not enough people are backing mm-hmm. it and they can't sustain development on this title. And these servers for this game are actually going to be shutting on September 12th. So just a mm. few days from now. Yeah, it, man. MMOs are expensive. They are. Yeah. yeah. They're one of the most expensive games to keep running. Yeah. Right. I don't it's sad to see these games go. I'm always sad when MMOs actually go out and under. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But that is some news, sad ones there. Now, let's talk about something else here. There were some developers from Riot, and I and I love when people use this as a selling point. X Riot devs form a new company called Singularity Six, and they're looking to build a new MMO as well. Mm. But it's always misleading, and people always get excited about when they see stuff like that. But you don't know what position they held. They could have been a junior developer who were, I don't know, developing an app to keep track of who's going to the bathroom. You know, I don't know. Mm. But they worked at Riot. I went through this list and I didn't see anyone that I saw that was particularly like a big name at Riot. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, the reason why I thought this was more interesting is because they are looking to develop a game that they called a community simulator. Again, going away from MMORPG into a community simulator making something that's more of a virtual world rather than an instant gratification game like what most modern MMOs from AAA studios are. You know what I feel what I what I instantly thought of when you first told me that? Mm. What is it called? The Sims. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought of when they were describing it. You know, there was a Sims Online at one point. There was a Sims Online? Yes, there was. Yeah, there was. Mm. It was a full subscription-based Sims MMORPG. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I played it. You you say was, so that leads me to believe that it's no longer there. Oh, no. EA (laughs) took that down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Uh, You believe correctly. Yeah, no. But, no, it was. Like, in... The the whole premise, once again, is building houses, right? But people could visit your house. And it it, it became essentially a glorified chat room, for lack mm-hmm. of a better word. Because you'd be doing stuff like you had different stats. Like you'd be doing these games or whatever to increase your stats. If you worked at the gym, you increased your strength. If you did like a puzzle, it increased your intelligence. There were different things you could do. And different ways of making money using those skills. But the majority of the time, what it came down to was, of course, people game the system. If you wanted strength training, it was better to do it in a group. So they formed these massive mega gyms where it would literally be like 100 people in one room doing bench press. (laughs) And it was a chat room. So why... Is it that when always we have this um, experience leveling, right? How come everybody goes to the meta the fastest you can go? Or the meta, everybody, that's a too large line of a word. The majority of people always, not always, the majority of people most likely are going to try to fast level. Why do they want to do that? Competitive. Is that what it is? There's a competitiveness of, because... If you level the fastest, <clears throat> you get access to a lot of the end game gathering materials and end game crafting materials faster. And then you can set the market for that. So there's a big competitive aspect of that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it was not competitive. It was how quickly can I beat myself? How quickly can I do it? Last time it took me 20 hours to level mm-hmm. my character up to, you know, ESO top. Mm-hmm. That, that's what still a form of being competitive. Is. That's just being competitive yeah, with yourself. It's being your own or your own records, your own scores. 
Yep. And that's like playing a racing game where you've got the ghost car, and that ghost car is your previous lap or your previous game. Oh, yeah. Ghost car. You, yeah, you got to beat it. You, you, yeah. you have to beat it, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's oh, yeah. absolutely no, cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine used to race home from work the yeah. same way every time because she wanted to beat her time. Every She wanted to keep beating her. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, thank you, Woodchip, again, for gifting subs to the channel. Thank you so much. Five subs. You are the best, Woodchip. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to think about... I don't, it's these modern MMOs, I think, more than anything else, where they take away the journey, and it's all about endgame. We talked about that in the first bit, about yep. Classic. Classic being so hard, and why there's value mm -hmm. in overcoming that difficulty. Mm -hmm. It is, and I, I think it's it's going to be something interesting. The reason why we even brought this up, and I know there's not a lot to talk about because we don't know much about it. There's a little bit of concept art. Mm -hmm. um, we know they're trying to create a stylized high fantasy world, and they say it's influenced by games like Stardew Valley. Yes. That means I'm going to farm all day long. That's it. <laughs> and uh, Breath of the Wild. Um, but it's the fact that a new MMO is coming, and they use the word virtual society. Yeah. And it's different. And actually, we're going to skip ahead in news. We're going to talk about a virtual society MMO a little bit here. Chronicles of Illyria. And I never really, heard of that one. Never heard you bring that one up. Never? Never. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, we actually do have a chapter for Chronicles of Illyria within DCN. Uh, it is a fascinating game from a concept point of view. Chronicles of Illyria isn't so much a game as a virtual world. At some point, I'm actually going to have a few people from the Chronicles of Illyria community to come in and give us a deep dive of the whole thing. But mm -hmm. the game is actually set that your character ages and dies, and you pass your skills and stuff onto your heir, and yep. you continue your lineage in that wet in that fashion. The thing that's most interesting is when they started building this, they decided how they were going to do this was the community was going to have a say in how the game starts out. So people, based on their pledge packages and stuff like that, are actually developing the country hmm. and, the, and the starting kingdoms. Mm. Mm. Now, I'm going to pull us up if I can. Is that the key? Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up in the background for those who are interested. This is one of the maps. This is for our server. And this is what they have been working on for months. There's, there's a lot of controversy around Chronicles of Lyria and how far along they are. They've been in development for many, many years. Mm hmm um, and they have a small development team. I think it's less than 20 or, or somewhere around that line. And one of the issues that they had, part of us getting closer to a playable alpha was to have what's called domain selection and settlement, which is where all the pledge backers actually go in on their server and select where their pledge packages are starting. From this map you see right here, the map has been split into five different kingdoms. Those are like the five people who spent more than $10,000 on the game. Mm. Yeah. Or more, definitely more. Cause there's a few people like, uh, this top kingdom of Vornair was yep. actually two kingdoms. Cause the guy spent, bought two monarch packages for 20 K <laughs> and just merged them together. There were supposed to be six kingdoms per continent. There's only five on our server. It's cool. interesting the amount of money people have. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be yeah. its own its own thing altogether. But what's really neat is they picked the king side. This this domain selection was supposed to start months ago. And you'll see there's if you look here on the screen, there's a you can claim your property in 13 days because it was based on where your pledge packages were. Mm. is when you can pick. I'm one of the lowest pledge packages. I, I pledge to all of these guys, all, all of the indie MMOs, because I want to see them succeed. 
even if I don't mm-hmm. plan on actually playing them, I, I have Camelot Unchained, I have Crowfall, I have Pantheon, um, a whole bunch of stuff. But they, they picked the kings, and then the entire website broke. <laughs> oh. Now, let me show you how in-depth this thing is. I'm going to jump in here. This is actually the kingdom of Boardwall, which is... Hold on. Hold on. Mm. Hold on. Guys dropped 20K, merged two of the six kingdoms, and made a five-kingdom uh, landmass, right? Yes. So what you're saying is if I drop 60K, the entire landmass is mine. Apparently. Had you done that before, yes. I'm just saying yeah. it could have happened. Somebody could be like, you know what? I want to buy a continent. 60 grand to buy a continent. I don't think that happened, but just hypothetically. Fascinating thought process. Anyways, go on. Yeah, but you know what the real fascinating thought process is? Mm. That person can be assassinated day one and be, lose $20,000. Well, they can have, if he's got $20,000 to spend on a in like a non investment. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure they're worried about it. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, I yeah. doubt it. Um, but when you're looking at this map, you'll see the amount of stuff that's contained here is more than what most MMOs would actually have. Me. Now, the size of the board wall kingdom alone based on this is, uh, eight, uh, 1.8 K to 2.5 KM squared. Jeez. We had talked about the size of the kingdom from top to bottom. And they said it would take, I forget how long it was something like to run from the very bottom of the map to the very top of the map would take something like 48 hours of continuous running. <laughs> yep. That is a freaking massive map. That's insane. I'm going to look inside this kingdom. So when you look inside the kingdoms, now you're starting to see how these maps are being selected because they finally got stuff working (laughs) to select your kingdom. Look further inside. And each one of these counties has different things like biomes are here the number of parcels for land oh my god the different resources that are available the estimated population the tribe breakdown it's, this would make a great pen and paper game yeah right well i think the map alone would be great at that right yeah 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 this yeah the level of micromanagement like all right so that's at a county level we'll look inside a little further and now we're actually at the town level, <laughs> mm-hmm. showing what it, within this town of Clanbridge right here was the one I picked. Self sustainability, the ability to support a larger population, what it actually contains. So this town actually will start with a well, a tavern, and a town hall. Um, its primary industry is hunting, and these are the different resources that are available. There's no caves. No high grounds, no coastal water, no clay, no minerals, no sand. But there is a trade route. Well, it's a trade route. Yeah. So, so you're saying yeah. it's The Sims meets a building civilization game meets a fantasy MMORPG. Correct. Hmm. Apparently. The reason why this is such a big deal is because this is what they've been saying have been holding us back from an actual testing of a product the fact it took them so long to get maps working on a website though has a lot of people concerned and should be that's kind of worrying now the depth of the map and everything like that is it's pretty crazy like i'm showing Mm -hmm. you guys right here it's Mm -hmm. pretty nuts but it, it is it is kind of scary so that's that's chronicles of illyria I have a lot of hope for Chronicles of Illyria because it's something different. Mm -hmm. That's needed. Something different is needed. It doesn't have raids. Like when people ask like, well, what do you do at Endgame? And they're like, well, there's not really an Endgame. There's no dungeons per se. I mean, there could be caves with monsters and stuff like that, but it's it's not something where there's a race to world first to down uh, Ragnaros. 
Yeah. Because that just doesn't exist. Mm. It's definitely a real life simulator set in a medieval mm. time. See, it's, and I don't know if we talked about this or somebody else I talked with. Innovation is messy. Mm -hmm. Innovation mm -hmm. doesn't always work. That's part of innovation. Sometimes innovation is like, mm, nobody's going to do it. Nobody's going to buy it. Sometimes it's phenomenal. Yep. Uh, you just, you never know what the innovation is going to be. I mean, who thought about, well, Edison, but why don't you put a vacuum in a, in a bulb and put a wire in it and feed electricity through it to make a light bulb? And it took him numerous, countless failures. <laughs> Hundreds and thousands of scientists trying it for him. Yep. You could, there's a, it's innovation is messy. That's our biggest, you know, uh, phrase at work right now. It's innovation. We need innovation, but it's messy. It's not really easy to do and it doesn't always work. Right. Which when it comes to Kickstarter backing, if you, it's like, it's like investing in a stock when it's super cheap and all of a sudden becomes Facebook. Yes. Right. It's, you know, how many, yeah. You how can many shoot. actually do, right? Yeah. How yeah. many do? How many times are you going to, like, for Shellos, how many times are you going to back an MMO that seems to be innovative and mm -hmm. how many of them are going to succeed? You know, it's true. Um, it's, uh, I don't, I don't even know. Like, the, just the level of what they're trying to do. Let me tell you a little bit about what Chronicles of Illyria is supposed to do before we move on to our next story. So magic exists in the world. Yeah. But you can't choose to be a mage. It, you, huh? may, you may have the trait inside of you, and something has to happen to your character. Their soulbound engine, or soulbind engine as the way they're describing it, is it is supposed to, and this is the thing that's amazing, if it sticks up. This is AI to a level that's insane. This is what's supposed to generate all the story. You mean to tell me that if I want to be a wizard... I have to pray to RN Jesus. Yes. Yep. The God of RNG that I am so called born, luckily, with this gene that says, by the way, you can be amazed, but you're not sure. And until even if you have occurs. that gene, you uh, may not know until something triggers within their uh, their soulbound engine to say you've unlocked mage. This is a really cool concept, but it's gonna turn off a segment of the MMORPG community. Who mm -hmm. want to just, you know, I want to roll a mage. What do you mean I can't roll a mage? What do you mean I have to pray? What do you mean it's luck? Yeah, this is going to be a segment that can be like, nah, I'm not doing this. It reminds me sure. of the Jedi from... Um, the mitochondrians? Well, many hundred. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no. Star the Wars Jedi Galaxies. in Star Wars Galaxies, where oh, when sorry. you started, mm, how you became a Jedi, no one knew. Hmm? They also have something called a soulmate system where you have a soulmate where you're linked to another account randomly. Mm. And those are divorces waiting to happen. No, it, but it doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean it's a relationship <laughs> thing. Well, I it, mean, think about it. If you're gonna, they're gonna, you're, I'm your soulmate. Well, that's a, the wrong thing to say to your significant also, other when it's not them. <laughs> isn't that map prohibitively massive? Oh, insanely so. Like, oh, yeah. So if your soulmate is so far away, like you'll never meet them. It's a yeah. It's a good possibility. And then if I do meet my soulmate, can we go like this and fusion into one super being because we're soulmates? Just like meld together into super soulmate, man. But they even say your soulmate may not be your best friend. They could be your enemy. And the soulbound system is supposed to generate content around that to lead you towards it. It's insane what all it's supposed to actually do. If my soulmate is my enemy and I cut off the head of my soulmate, do I gain my soulmate's power? No, you're not. You're not doing a, a quickening. Not unless you eat their eyeballs. Highlander. It's Highlander. Oh, got to eat them. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Gotcha. This is the innovation. People keep talking about where I think what's going to make MMOs really exciting Matter again, again. And set them, <laughs> is AI. An AI that mm. makes the world feel alive. How about boss agree. fights that learn? Well, we're seeing that with yeah, what Ashes is supposed to learn. be able to do. The idea of how nodes spawn 
And then it is supposedly will kick off events based on how things spawn. Right? Uh-huh. Hmm. But uh, there's, again, all this is buzzwords from Chronicles of Illyria. But if they're yeah. able to pull that off, that's going to set stuff. Even if a real life medieval simulator is not your thing, this mm. soulbound engine to be able to essentially create content without developers needing to be available. That's cool. Could be something big. I take back my previous statement. Please don't have boss fights learn. I want to farm my gear. And if it gets uh, progressively harder to farm that gear, and I don't have that one piece, and it drops from that one boss, Bob makes it impossible to beat now because he's learned after 37 fights. That's not cool. Mm -hmm. I want that piece of gear, please. Mm -hmm. 37. Talk about after, you know, a thousand fights. Yeah, depending on the drop chance. Oh, my God. How many after 2,000 fights? You oh, know, it's server games, wide, right? It's not, <laughs> dude, it's not just you fighting that boss and him learning just based off of you. It's every Everybody. single person. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. So all these, me- oh, the mechanics figured out. Well, not anymore. <laughs> On the flip side, poor Jimmy Buffy. Wow, that's a weird name. Comes along like six months after the game comes out, and he's like, "I want to do this now," but all of a sudden, this boss is like insanely difficult. Yep. Jimmy Buffy, that's a name. Jimmy I, I just Buffy. made it as my next um, Dungeons and Dragons character name whenever I play again in uh, 2057. When I'm old and stuff. Jimmy Buffy, I will make him. Well, Jimmy Buffy okay. may actually be coming to Arc Age Unchained. Who really knows? <laughs> that's the worst segue. <laughs> segue tried, failed. That is the worst. <laughs> I give you up. You rolled a natural one on that <laughs> yeah. segue. Uh, nope. Fail. You attack an org and trip. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. I, I tried to do something cool, but no. You tried, but you know, when we started. But you know who else is trying to do something cool, but it'll yeah, probably fail? Gamigo. All right, let's talk about that. That's a better segue. Yeah, there, there, there you go. go. Better All segue. Right, there you go. That was good. Mm, yeah, I think I rolled right. at least an eight on that. Wait. Arc Age <laughs> Unchained. Mm-hmm. Where to start with Arc Age Unchained? So this got announced a few weeks ago. To set this up, if you've never played Arc Age, Arc Age is a cult hit that had such a huge following, or potential following, I guess I should say, Mm -hmm. until its own developers ruined it. It had a lot of potential. Like, in fact, obviously, all of us are on the from the Ashes show for Ashes of Creation. Stephen Sharif adored. Arc Age. And when Arc Age failed is pretty much what spawned him to make Ashes of Creation. Yeah. So, Arc Age became a pay-to-win mess. It had tons of servers and now I think it has two, maybe three. And they're low pop. They're definitely not uh, Mm -mm. WoW Classic levels. Nope. Yep. Nope. So what XL Games and Gamigo, the company that now owns what is left of Tryon Worlds, is attempting to do, is something called Arc Age Unchained. So what we know about Arc Age Unchained is literally they're just changing the payment model, which is the biggest problem. This is now a buy-to-play, not free-to-play title. Yep. There will be no subscription... And that includes patron status, for those who don't know what that is. That was a a sub-bonus that increased a bunch of stuff for you. Uh, Faster labor regain, stuff like that. They also say they're not doing any pay-to-win in the cash shop, where we have heard that before. I don't know. Yeah. Yes, we have heard that before. Yeah, we've heard that a lot before. I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think of this before I jump into it? Fool me once. The model itself. What? Fool me People once. Are getting away from that model, right? Yeah. People are getting away from that model. They're, they're you're into. I don't like that model. That it's all freeware, but that seems what people are into. Yep. Well, right. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Go ahead, Alpha. I, I think I think their game has. So I, I think it's a, a step in the right direction, but I think their game has like an inherent problem. Um, there's a really good video. I forgot what her name was, but if you search, um, 
for like, should I join Arc Age today? Mm. The um, like for an app, for a normal person to get into the game and be competitive, um, you know, pay to win aside, it would take over. I think it was like a year and a half the calculation, and that's just to get on a serviceable level, you know, against somebody who has been playing. Yeah. Right. I'm not sure if that problem is just solely because of the pay to win aspect. Like, I almost feel that you'll have that same problem, even with this new payment model, it'll just occur a little bit later. It'll take longer. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, One of the things that was so pay to win about it was the item regrade system Hmm. where you essentially, if you played BDO, it's like their enhancement system. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. Yeah. You rolled for a chance of regrading your gear to a higher stat, and it either failed or succeeded. Oftentimes it failed and then would go down levels. Yeah. Sound familiar? Tet. No. Nope. Tet rolls. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there were cash shop items you could buy to increase your chances, I believe it was. Maybe it was even insurance that it wouldn't downgrade. So those who paid money had a better chance of regrading their gear than those who didn't. Yep. So what Alpha is saying is the inherent problem of a gear discrepancy will always be there. The only difference is now you can't even pay to get across it. You yep. have to really work to get exactly. it. Exactly. Is that really a problem, though? Well, I think it is if you want your... I think naturally within MMOs, you have people who pick it up and who put it down at various portions, right? And if you have, if the barrier to entry is that high, where the strongest people can never be realistically caught up to yep. in a PvP game, what's the point? Like, yeah. you, you start at, you know, the very beginning, keep playing, and you keep up with that curve, or you don't play at all. Yeah. Right? Hmm. Okay. Crojack, what about you? What are your thoughts? I am out of my depth in this topic. Okay. I I am blissfully ignorant to anything involved in this game. I was so deep in World of Warcraft that at the time, like when did Arcage first come out? You know, actually I'm not really sure. Uh, it's been out a while. But yeah, Wait, remember 14 years, 15 years of WoW. J- January 15th, 2013. It was released in Korea and North America. It came out September 16th, 2014. Okay, I was knee-deep in World of Warcraft still at that point in time. So I, I, I don't even know what Arcade looks like, to be quite honest. Korean. I don't even know what it like. I don't know. <laughs> it looks Korean. Yeah, I know Korean. nothing about the game. So I am Korean. way out of my depth here. To be honest, I think, based on what I know about you, Krojak, I think you would like Arcade. Probably would. Weeb. Probably would. But World of Warcraft has its 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 roots so deep in me. Right. It's just I'm there. Right. Mm. What? All right. For those who again don't know, Arc Age. The reason why it had so much hope was because of its developer, Jake Song. If you don't know who Jake Song was, he's the guy who made Lineage. Okay. Lineage was massive. Yeah. It's still mad. It's Lineage One, which is. I forget how old that game is. It's 20, 25 years old. It's really old. It's still like the top grossing game in Korea. Mm. Still the top grossing game in Korea. In That's m- crazy. Money. Yeah. Nothing could touch it. So there was a lot so of why? hope for it. Why? Why? What I makes that different? I don't know. What may... I don't what know why they spend why money so it's that much for 20 years, the number one game. Think about the Crazy. generations that have changed in 20 years. Yeah. Games that have moved, right? Yeah. Why? Here, there's no way in the world you're going to get, you know, that long. No. I don't know. World of Warcraft is only doing it because it's literally revamping what it did once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's nostalgia. Yep. And... I don't know if nostalgia is going to last that long. We will see. This has been great. What other game, what other humongo game, like a genre-defining game has tried this? 
right? World of Warcraft oh, is like a Halo. Yeah, Halo. Oh, you mean or, like a uh, like a relaunch? Or, yeah, like a or, redo yeah. of its base know, game. Right? Final Fantasy XIV. But that wasn't really genre defining. Like, no. remember, World of Warcraft took well, MMOs from good to amazing. I, I think that, but it's not genre defining, right? It, no. it didn't yeah. define the MMO. Okay, it's a re- very good one, but it's not defining. Let's rephrase it. It took MMOs from being nerd stuff to everyone and their mothers doing it. Mr. T, Ozzy Osbourne, yes. and Mini Me making commercials about it. Yes, I would agree to that. Right. I'm trying to figure out if there's a precedent to what Blizzard's doing on, at this scale of popularity, and I can't think of nothing. The sad part with my mind, let me, let me, let me give my concerns. we just seen this happen with Bless. It had failed okay. all over the world. Yeah. And got taken down. They're now yeah. rebranding it Bless Unleashed and releasing it only for the Xbox and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Arc Age in the West is failing to the point where yeah. they they're on a skeleton crew, okay? My concern is that this is a last ditch cash effort to try to get people to buy founders packs which by the way are available. Cheapest one is $26 and the most expensive one is 80. If people buy that again, it's another huge cash infusion. For this mm-hmm. game before it gets shut down, mm-hmm. I and, and there's people complaining about the the buy to play model. The one thing with buy to play though, especially with server cost, yep. How do you maintain revenue? Yeah, Elder Scrolls Online is doing this right now. Elder Scrolls Online though has a big development company that pushes out a new DLC every three months. Mm-hmm. Yep. Gamigo doesn't have that. And while it's body play, it's also subscription. No, not this mm-hmm. one. There's Our no ESL. Oh well yeah, they have a subscription model as well. Yeah. So there's there's ways of, of doing that. But like XL Games isn't going to do anything. You think XL Games is going to maintain a DLC schedule for this? No, probably not. No. no. I mean, what has happened? How long has it taken to get, uh, what is it, 5.0, Hiram or whatever it is? Like, it's slow for both sides. I don't see how it's going to do anything other than try to get a whole bunch of money up front before it's over. Anyway. Yep. All right. Those are my concerns about uh, Arcage Unchained. I don't. I don't know. I don't have a lot of faith in Gamigo. They bought out a failing try on worlds when they went bankrupt. They mm. now own all of their properties. They're not doing anything with Rift other than adding a season pass uh, to yeah, an that's MMO. True. They own Rift, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't I don't know. A season pass to an MMO. That's an interesting twist, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Um if you think about it, it's sort of like a subscription, but a year-based subscription. Yeah. Is it a year-based? Season I don't pass. Know, it's, it's a season pass, whatever the season is, whether it's year, half year, right? You're basically saying, we're subscribing to it for this period of time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's a cyclical way of bringing in money at a smaller amount than it would be than just buying it outright. Yep. And, and I see Theater Alpha chat. Arcage Alpha was great when uh, great. Then they ruined it. If they would just go back to that Alpha, it would be outstanding. I wonder. I'm I'm wondering if that's what they're trying to do with this. Maybe because Alpha, it was the uh, patch 1.12, I think it was, which here in the West they dubbed that the Cash Shop patch. That is what started to see the the down, uh, decline in Arc Age's popularity. Huh. So if they're trying to take it back to that level, I don't. Mm. I, I don't know. I, I really don't. There is so much negative will for Arc Age right now. 
I don't think anything that they could do will bring it back. Because what, what Alpha said, fool me once, you know, shame on me. They fool yeah. people, like, this is what, the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time? Yep. And now yeah. you have to buy it again? Yeah. That is kind of a similar fear that some people have with Ashes because of the BR, right? It's given a, a bad first impression of what that company is doing. Arcage, on the other hand, have already released a product. That product has already pretty much failed in the West. And now they're trying to do it again? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and, and it's just the fact that the people who are making the game. So, like, when they had to redo Final Fantasy fourteen. Square mm. Enix legitly cared about its IP. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It did. Yeah. XL Games has no issue with its cash shop, which is what it was mo- you know, mostly hated for in the West. Yep. They have no issue with it. It's fine in Korea. Why are they going to do anything? We've already had discussion about how Korean developers feel about the West. Yeah. It, it's an almost xenophobic level of... We know what we're doing. The West has no idea what they want. They'll play what we want because we have superior systems. In, yep. in a nutshell. Yeah. They and, literally and don't do care. We? And do we? Well, yeah, because we don't have anything else. And they, and they know that. So, so XL do Games it. does not care. They're not going to do anything for the West side. They're not going to change the fundamental game. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually that's a really good point. With um, when when Final Fantasy messed up, it's if you if you go through and you see the um the interview that Yoshi P gave after the whole thing happened, um he gave them two choices. He basically said we can try and patch the game like crazy, um mm. and you know we'll you know get things up and running quicker. It'll cost less money. Uh, or we can do this relaunch, FF14 relaunch, which has never been done. It'll take a lot more money. It'll take a lot more time. But our reputation, like Ajello said, would be saved. I don't think Amigo has that same uh, they don't tie care. to this. I don't think they care. Yeah. Yeah. Gamigo is literally the repository for MMOs that failed in Europe. It really is. They just buy up I- <coughs> excuse me, IPs. And then just let them run their course. They buy them cheap and let them run. Yep. <coughs> I'm dying over here. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. I'm, it, it just infuriates me when I see this. Yeah. Because I know that I, I know they don't care. This is literally just a cash grab because XL Games is fine with the game the way it is. Yep. Why else when they first released it in the West. Did they release it with one point whatever? It was localized, and people were begging them not to bring out one point one two, saying, yeah. "Listen, we don't want that level of cash grab. We don't want that at all." XL Game said, "Screw you. We're gonna do it anyway." Yeah. They torched their own product in the West. Why is it going to be any different this time? It won't. No, it won't. It won't. Even though we have the internet now, <clears throat> and, and history is like right there in front of your fingertips, people easily forget. Mm-hmm. There will be people shouting and screaming how bad it is. But there will also be people who are like, no, I think it'll be pretty good. Yeah, look at Bless Online. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it works, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Anyway, <clears throat> I think we've reached the end of this. I can't talk about Arcage anymore without getting upset. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I still got messages from people going, are we going to play Arcage? Are you going to join Arcage? I'm like, I didn't join it the first time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not going to do this again just to give Gamigo a bunch of money and XL Games yeah, no. who doesn't care. No. Stupid. Anyway. I want to thank my awesome co-hosts for joining us once again this evening. You guys are great. Check out Stormzord, everything he does, Digital Piper Studios, where he is developing games and BRs for less than $20. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it can be done. Check out mm-hmm. all his work over there. 
pretty awesome. Alpha Soul is doing tons of stuff over there on his channel, the underscore alpha underscore soul. Check out his latest uh, comparison between Ashes of Creation and World of Warcraft Classic, whether or not the two success or uh, the success of one equals success of the other. It's a good it's a good watch. And of course, Mr. Crojack everywhere, Mr. Crojack Twitch, YouTube, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All those places. Check out him. Streams every day, long periods of time. I Yeah, it's great. All right. Thank you so much, guys. You are amazing. You can follow everything we do over at DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com. There you'll find links to all of our social media, including Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Be sure to check out our Patreon program, Patreon.com slash DungeonCrawlerNetwork, if you want to help support the show. You can also leave us a five-star review on iTunes so people know that we are a real podcast, that we say real words, and sometimes they matter. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of The Dungeon Crawlers, and we'll see you next time. See you later, everybody. <laughs>